what we can do now to emphasize our scene, you know, make it a lot better is to add the uh, sort of like candles and the candle lights. And we're going to use Niagara Fluids to create the lights. Um, now, what very important to understand is that the uh, Embergen version of a candle light is going to be a lot better than Niagara Fluids. But this is sort of the, you know, the tutorial way of doing something that's free. So let's try it now. But in the course, you can get the candle light from Embergen as part of the project files. Okay, so what we're going to do is uh, we're going to create a new system. Let me just first get a candle light. Uh, sorry, a candle, more like. So we've got the candle over here, and we're just going to drag it and drop it over onto this table. So just so we can see it right here, you know, I think this is going to be okay just for us to, for demonstration purposes. And we need to add a new system in here, uh, which is going to be a Niagara fluid system. And what we're going to do uh, is we're going to go back into our um, cinematic tutorial folder and we're going to go into our Niagara systems and we have a, we have the smoke created. Um, now we need to create a candle. Now these particular ones that you're seeing in here, these are part of the Embergen um, setup. So I'm just going to call that Embergen candle. And all of these will go in there. So if you want to see that, uh, follow through with the, with the course. Um, but then we're going to create a new system in here. ...of generating a flame inside this scene. So we're going to double click, uh, sorry, right click, choose an Niagara system, create an empty. We're going to call this NS um, candle light okay and then we're going to double click it and just like before i am going to try and keep its properties visible um, onto one side but first we need to create it so this is the niagara system in here we're going to right click um, add emitter and then we're going to select from parent emitters we're going to select the gas master emitter and with that added in we can press this arrow down here to squeeze up the all the details because we obviously just need the panel on the right here so i'm just i'm just doing a few adjustments so we can see that properly okay now what we can do is we can actually drop this effect into the scene like that but this is going to be quite a big effect and it's actually been moved outside my uh field of view so i'm just going to right click it here in the uh, world outliner and i'm going to say snap snap object to view and there we go uh, we've got it here so let me just make sure that i've got it selected like that okay that's fine it's quite huge so we need to reduce its size dramatically this first thing that we're going to do to reduce its size is actually go to the scale of this and we're going to put that to a 0 0.1 um, and 0 0.1 might be too little we'll just have to see but first let's just get into position whatever we think that this should be so right about there okay so that's the system over there and you can see it's hitting the top which is not what we would want it to do but uh, we've got time now to start editing it so the first thing i'm going to set the resolution to 100 just to make sure that we're not getting a lot of um, you know we're not getting we're going to get a performance hit I'm going to keep the pressure solver iteration to six i am going to however increase my um you know sort of like the top of the domain so it goes higher by the way i'm also going to deactivate the niagara effects in the background just so we can see this one in particular um okay now what we want to do is we want to have a look at you know pivot and uh sort of like pressure relaxation and density buoyancy and things like that so for density buoyancy i'm going to put this to a minus one and I'm going to look at the temperature buoyancy again to a minus one. We're not going to use a lot of density in this. We're actually going to be using temperature more than anything else. So uh, I would uh, remove the mesh collision and mesh distance field and we don't actually need that. We don't want it to collide with anything. Um, so once you get that removed and the system resets, we're going to scroll further down. And this is the this is the point where we have color. We have uh, you know what type of uh, if you got any hue shift range on this, so we can actually 
say, well, actually, I don't want any hue shift range. Um, and I do not want this to be additive either. Um, if you change the color to it right now, you're not really going to see anything because the color isn't enabled. So if you enable it in there, you will be able to see color being added to the effect. Like you're seeing there. Um, we're going to probably reduce our emit radius to about 45. We're going to put our density to about 0 0.2. And we now, you know, want to look at how what the temperature should be like. And if we're going to, you know, uh, want to have a high temperature or not. It's, it's you know, there's, there's like different sort of scenarios in here that we could, we could change. So I'm actually going to search for the attributes into this panel. And um, actually, let me just have a look and see what other settings we need to sort of try and work out in order to get it um, sort of going. So we now have, a, because we have a very low density and temperature, and temperature isn't even on, uh, we're going to have to enable it. So you can find temperature into, um, at, into the attribute sort of point in here. You can see there you can, un, you can tick temperature which will then add some other fields for you to use. Now you can see it right over there. And our temperature settings, um, probably going to leave them as they are for now. And then we're going to go up here at the, um, at this sort of gravity. And we do have to play around with the gravity. So maybe do like a minus a hundred and see if that goes up. And if it still doesn't go up, which doesn't look like it will, um let's try 100 and see okay so 100 is pushing it upwards which is nice you can see what that effect looks like as i said it's not going to be like with embergen where you're going to get a nice uh clear effect this is going to be quite fuzzy but we can increase its um sort of like its you know resolution but as you increase the resolution it also goes a lot higher up which is a bit of a downer but then you can sort of work on um you know things like buoyancy and things like that actually i think i need to decrease this um sorry increase it but you see if i go too large it's going down so i actually need a minus 0 0.5 or something i'm trying to reduce how much it's it's allowed to go up as you as you're noticing right so now i think that's about right maybe we could do some more obviously this is with an increased resolution and I think that's that's probably a bit, yeah, probably it's okay. We could probably try with uh, minus 0 0.1 and see what happens there. Um, yeah, you see, after a while, it sort of is okay. But now that it's going up, what we can do, uh, I don't know if we, I don't think we need a color for this because we already got temperature on. I don't think we need to have any color enabled. I think temperature is going to be just fine. And then um, it's obviously emitting some form of light and you can see it's sort of bleeding. The light is bleeding in the background because of how lumen functions. But again, at render time, you won't have this issue. But what I would do is uh, look at the emission raise, uh, radius and probably put that to like a 30 or something like that. So I think that looks a lot more like a sort of a candle light. But, you know, these are the basic settings that we've just done. And at this point, you can just keep on building it. Um, you know, change the settings around until you get something that you want. So, you know, we can put it somewhere around there and eyeball it so that's on top of that. But I think the best course of action for us is to make this into a blueprint rather than have it this way. And as you can see, when you bring it closer to the candle, you can see that's actually the size it needs to be a bit bigger. So what we're going to do now, because this is saved in the system and not saved here in the world, we can actually delete the candle light and we can also delete the candle and instead we can go in here and um, we can create a new blueprint. Actually, I'm just going to create this blueprint into my blueprint folder. I'm going to go in here. I have a, a BP candlelight that's made with Embergen. I'm now going to create one. Uh, actually, I can duplicate this one in here and candlelight Niagara. Well, this one is going to be candlelight embergen we're going to open the niagara candlelight and now let's have a look at the blueprint uh in the viewport we can uh, can see what elements we've got in here so oh sorry so we've got the we've got this um candlelight we're going to obviously delete the light 
we'll just now have the candle and a point light in the scene. And these are the settings for the point light, the only settings that have changed. Uh, so the point light is just a just right here where the candle itself is. And now we can uh, onto the candle, select it and press add, and we can select um, a Niagara system. So we're going to type in Niagara particle component like that. And then you can see that in here, you can actually uh, drop in a system. So if we go back into our um, Niagara folder, we can select the candlelight and then place it in there. So now we have the candlelight and we need to see where it is. And you can see it's quite massive right now. But this is why it needs to go to 0 0.1. So it's a far sort of smaller effect. Now we just need to uh, search for it. Let me just pull it up. And hopefully I'll be able to see it. There we go. There it is. So now I'm going to bring it right about there on the tip. Um, and I think it's probably going to have to be a bit bigger. So 0 0.2. Oh no, 0 0.2 is way too big. I think we're just going to have to edit its spawn size. So maybe a 0 0.13 in size like that. And let's just have a look. Uh, it's not actually hitting the tip, so we can just bring this a bit further. And then to the side, like that. And the thing is, you only need to do this once, because once you've done it, it's done. You can just copy this blueprint around and use it however many times you want. Something like that. Okay, so let's just compile and see what that looks like in the scene. So I'm going to go into my blueprints. This is the Niagara. And now I'm going to drag it and put it into the scene. Did I put it into the scene? Nope. There we go. It's now in the scene. And as you can see, it's, uh, it's going to start, including with the Niagara uh, particle. Now, if you notice any issues with it, like, for example, maybe the Niagara particle is too much touching that sort of base there, or it's not enough, you can then just go in here in the Blueprint Editor, and you are able to edit it a little bit maybe something like that and if you want to actually make this elongated you can click this button here to um, disable the lock and then you can do a 0 0.15 which then means that it's taller it's longer as opposed to the sides okay so this is our candle light now and we can select this um, by the way if the if the light doesn't look right like you see this right here um, you can select the point light and maybe you can see it's actually was hitting the stem. So you may want to bring it something like that up, compile and have a look. And this is probably looking better now. Um, so now we can obviously drag this around a few times. You can even create a sort of a free point light system with it because of how, because we have a point light to each of these elements. And then if we turn on our um, smoke here, like that, you can see that this is this light is interacting with the smoke that's coming in. So if you actually take those uh, candles, so uh, let me just see where they are. Uh, so these candles, which I'm going to put them all in a folder. I'm going to move them, create new folder, and then this folder is going to be um, Niagara Light. Okay, if I disable these, you'll notice how dark the scene becomes because without them, right? So the smoke isn't lit and we lose some of that sort of look and feel to it when we disable them. So that's how, that's the power of just some candles in the scene that are interacting with the environment. That's there's some very powerful stuff here for your cinematics. And this is why I wanted to show you this particular workflow. And what I would do, uh, just, um, you know, as an advanced sort of method, you could look at making this point light on every one of these candles flicker like candles do. And that is a, a separate thing. I don't want to go into that here in this tutorial, but you can search for that online on YouTube and you should be able to find an easy solution for this.